give a fuck. I'm 78 fucking years old. Why should I put up with this shit? I'm gonna make no difference whatsoever. Because the only thing it will ultimately come to is that, well, this guy's been a fucking crazy all his life. You know. That's not true. That'll humanize That, of course you. it that'll, is. No, it will not humanize yes, it. Yes, that'll make people understand. That's your who opinion, you are. Ben. It ain't mine. Well, but I don't understand. The movie's about me don't, finding Don't, don't, you. don't, don't. Come on. Don't, don't tell me. You know me what this shit. is? This is Please. about who you are and what your oh, past experiences oh, have been. No, no. And what you've learned. Oh, well, I sure. You want to talk about me? Yeah. Oh, I, wonderful. I'm trying to talk about you. Yeah. And you're not well, letting me I talk about you. I don't. Why not? That's what I'm asking you. That's what I don't understand. Ben, if you don't like it, pack up. Get the fuck out. My introduction to Jack Redney came in the form of a VHS tape, a bootleg compilation of outtakes from a Winnebago sales video made in 1989. All right, here we go. The Winnebago Concepts and Engineering Departments have developed a multifunctional bathroom. Privacy, I don't even know what the fuck I'm reading. I wonder what the fuck the real dialogue is. What the fuck is this thing? All of the windshield, for fuck's sake. Oh, fuck. That didn't sound for shit, did it? We're, what we're doing is we're building a fucking industrial film, trying to give these guys everything they can get to I me. Mean, that's it. Fuck it. It's going to be very helpful in keeping you from falling down, you big dumb son of a bitch. What the fuck was that? Oh, fuck. 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 Oh, fuck. Shit! I gotta read it again because my mind is just a piece of shit this morning. Tony, do me a favor, will you please? Will you? Will you, will you do me a kindness? Leave. Yeah. I think I'm gonna be walking in and out if you're gonna fuck up and I gotta come back. I don't again. make any difference to me at this juncture. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Tony. Don't slam the fucking door. No more. I was immediately mesmerized. I played it over and over again. Who was this guy? And where did this come from? I decided to find out. Oh, I've seen this before. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, I've seen this like hundreds of times, man. This guy's, I mean, this guy's like a legend, basically. I mean. Soon after I got the tape, I found out that I wasn't the only one fascinated with Jack Redney. I don't think I can remember the first time I've seen it, because I've seen it, you know, several hundred times, so. It sort of all blurs together. I just started like bringing it everywhere in my backpack just to like put it on. Like I'd show it to someone and then I wouldn't see them for a year and I'd see them and they'd go, no more. You come upon someone that's seen it and you speak the same language. You just start quoting, my mind's a piece of shit this morning, I'm blinded by this hot light. I'm blinded by that fucking hot light. Commercials are meant to be these picture perfect, pristine, Things. Why can't I remember? I wrote this stuff. Why can't I remember it? With everything being scripted and every composition being carefully composed, it's our chance to look behind the curtain. It's a real moment, you know? Like, what you're seeing on that tape is probably the worst day of this guy's life. I don't want any more bullshit any time during the day from anyone. That includes me. It was probably intended to be destroyed. Every friend I played it to instantly would take it, copy it, Give it back. If you love the tape, you would you would make as many dubs as you could and give it out to everybody you can. It moves like a virus. For almost 20 years, VHS tapes were passed hand to hand all over the country. The tapes were copied and copied and copied until the Just images were so running. degraded Just that by the time running. I got a tape, Just it looked like running. this. Just keep running, bullshit. I'm gonna slate this fucker. All right, I, I haven't got time to mark this motherfucker. Here we go again. We can't hear anybody. Nobody can talk to anybody. Then in 2005, YouTube came along, and Jack became a viral video phenomenon. He became known as the Winnebago Man, the RV guy, or most outrageously, the angriest man in the world. God damn son of a bitch! What do you mean, one? I'm gonna fall off the fucking thing. Fuck off! References to Jack started showing up everywhere. Tony, do me a favor, will you please? Will you? Will you, will you do me a kindness? Would you, uh, do me a kindness? Look, kids, do me a favor, will you please? Will you? Will you do me a kindness? What does the goddamn line say, Tony? Line? What's the first line? I don't give a shit what the line is. If I ask for the line again, don't tell me. Line? I don't want any more bullshit any time during the day. Any? Bullcrap from anyone. 
Buongiorno. Proschizze di dentro di Cerocente, Winnipeg or Grand Master. Se fosse una faccetta da la fangula faccetta per la zona. Friends in Hollywood told me how Jack had become a kind of hero on film sets, with actors and crew members quoting him to each other. There's even a painting of Jack as Shrek that hangs in the DreamWorks Animation headquarters. But where was Jack? And how was all this notoriety affecting him? So one night, I began searching around on Google. After sifting through countless pages of blog entries and fan sites, I came across an obscure posting on a sailing website. Simply signed, Jack Rebney, Planet Earth. I'm looking for a boat. I need a boat of approximately 50 feet in length and some six foot six inches of headroom as I am set upon a couple of years living out this lifelong dream. It's true that I'm very old, but also still capable of making any yacht sing her peculiar song. I can fix just about anything except electronic devices, which are clearly the work of the devil. But go ahead, walk out on that limb by listing four boats from 40 to 50 plus feet upon which you could set sail for Kiribati. That strange letter was the only trace of Jack beyond the infamous Winnebago Man clip. Was Jack out at sea? Was he sailing to Kiribati to get away from fans like me? Or was he just living a normal life somewhere, unaware that he'd become a new kind of celebrity? exactly the kind of attention that most people want. One of the most watched internet videos of all time is the Star Wars kid. In 2002, Ghislaine Raza made a video of himself at his high school, swinging a golf ball retriever as if he were fighting with a lightsaber. Another student discovered the video and posted it online where it caught fire immediately. The clip was seen by millions, and people all over the world began making conversions of it, adding music, special effects, and combining it with other well-known films. But Guise Lane was humiliated. The attention and teasing were so extreme that he was put into a psychiatric hospital. His family filed a lawsuit against four of his classmates and settled out of court for $250,000. The harassment of Raza created the term cyberbullying. What these clips usually have in common is the, the degree to which they humiliate the subject. This is Douglas Rushkoff, a media expert who coined the term viral video. There's the uh, uh, joy of watching another human being be humiliated, you know, that sort of that Roman spectacle torture of another person. Why can't I remember? I wrote this stuff. Why can't I remember it? You know, your original interest in this guy was the classic, oh, my God, what a buffoon. Look what he's doing. But as a filmmaker, as someone who thinks about these things, you know, you start to think, well, who is this guy? What happened to him? What, what did this experience do to him? Fuck. Not even funny anymore. You're paying the price for our collective, you know, cultural guilt at having humiliated this person. You're going back and finding, well, what happened? If I'm going to find Jack, I need some leads. So I visit Charlie Sotelo in Cinco Barnes who years before YouTube hosted a TV show featuring underground videos. 
they were among the first to discover the Winnebago Man tape. Now, the first time I got it, oh, I had no idea what it was. I just, you know, kind of put the tape in, and the first time you see it is the first you ever hear of anything. Charlie tells me he was sent an even longer version of the Winnebago Man clip, with almost 10 more minutes of footage. Accoutrement that you will need. Accoutrement? What is that shit? <laughs> Get out of here, you fucking flies. Have you guys ever tried to find Jack or anyone else in your videos? Why? Well, I guess the ultimate question would be why? Why would we want to do you that? You see, I never got obsessed I, enough yeah, to do things like that. It destroys the whole illusion. This is to be watched. This is a cage. It's something on the other side. I have no interest at all in getting to the person. And I don't want the reality of it. I want to see the buffoon on stage performing for me, you know? Like the guy who falls and breaks his back or whatever. Hey, hey, people! Welcome back to the show! You! It's funny when you don't know them. You know, the EMTs that show up there and have to set all those bones, have to tell the family or whatever. I mean, that's tragic for them. But for us, it's just those 30 seconds, you know, of that awful, awful mistake. It makes us reflect on shit that we hopefully will never do. Maybe. That's really, that's kind of the allure of it, is you don't know anything except <laughs> industrial film, angry guy screaming, let's go, play it. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's, that's all you need to know. Yeah, there's, there's no reason to know the guy. No, that really spoils it all. I head to New York to meet the co-founders of the Found Footage Festival. I'm Joe. My name's Nick. Who are known for finding the people in these videos. So here now are the outtakes of Jack Repney, the world's angriest RV salesman. Here we go. We've always wanted to have Jack on this thing, but we always just assumed he was dead. I like, think the speculation was that he was long dead of an ulcer by now. Or a heart uh, attack or something. Based on the amount of anger in the video alone, we, we thought, there's no way we, this guy... I mean, we did, like, Google searches for him, you know, but we, we never came up with anything. We even did, like, this Ancestry.com search for him, and um, we could never find him, so we just assumed he was gone. With no leads, I decided to take a more direct approach. Winnebago industry. Hi, I'm calling about a man named Jack Rebney. Okay, I guess. When I ask about the clip, they send me to the PR department. Winnebago knows the clip, and they want nothing to do with it. In their words, they quote, want to distance themselves from that material. They've had no contact with Jack Rebney since he finished the industrial videos in 1989. I remember the bizarre credits on the tape Charlie gave me. I managed to find Mike Welkley, the original cameraman, and he leads me to the other crew members. So I travel to Minneapolis to meet them. Oh, fuck! You're disturbing my what's left of my brain. We, we shot in August. Every day was 12 and a half, somewhere as long as 14-hour days. My nerves are shot. Uh, to tr you know, I just felt like, oh, how did I get through this? He was like a jerk all the time, and he was swearing all the time, and he was just, I mean, you know, when the camera, I actually think when the camera was on, he was a little bit better behaved. It was a major task just to complete the amount of shots. Oh, six, seven, eight, 10, 12, 15. Some of the take numbers were outrageous. The script, you you were like, what do you think you're, what are you writing? Like, you think you're writing like, sh you know, Shakespeare? Someone once said something about the journey of a thousand miles beginning with but a single step. <laughs> of course, if you throw your back out on that first step, you stay home. Tony, give me a towel for just a minute, please. <sighs> that. <laughs> Tony was a Unpaid intern, uh, just out of high school, right? He had graduated yeah. that spring. Yeah. You know, he wasn't getting paid. It wasn't, it, he wasn't a professional, all this kind of stuff that we were trying to hold these lines on. Tony was sort of a free bird. Tony, 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 get me a battery. Tony, open the door. Bring the slate in, Tony. Just bring it, just bring it in here now. Stand still, Tony. Give me a battery, Tony. Open the door, Tony. Tony, it's the wrong angle, babe. I'm... Tony, please back up. <laughs> it was done to get him fired. Um, so when the shoot was over, the tapes were passed out to all the crew people, and that was it. I don't think they shot anymore. I think that was it. They, I think, and I think within a month, he was gone from there. I felt bad. I felt bad. I thought, I thought Jack is getting a bad rap. I thought, you know, he wasn't as bad as the 
video had indicated. I just kind of thought, okay, I'll let this thing slide because everyone was squawking about it and talking. Have you seen the Winnebago? Have you seen the thing? And it was getting passed around. And, and there was a part, there's a part of me that felt kind of bad for Jack Rimney. I, I got to say it. It's really, and I'm going to be very honest, it's not a, a week that goes by that I don't think about that job. I never really saw him after that. And I was kind of wondering. All of my searches are dead ends. The industrial video was the last and only time anyone has seen Jack. Was he so humiliated that he went into hiding? Out of ideas, I hire a private investigator. Okay, how do you spell it? It's an that... R E B N E Y. That's weird. There's nothing of any substance. There's there's no property, there's no cars, there's nothing employment-wise, there's no hunting licenses, there's no voter registration. What does that mean? <laughs> Anything from trying to change his identity to you don't want anybody to really know who you are and what you're about. There's multiple things going on with this guy, and I don't know what they are. So it would be quite a challenge, I think, to find him. Mr. Steinbauer, this is Jack Rebney. I received your letter today. It's inconceivable to me that you would have any interest in this, but if you want to talk, I'm interested. Good day, and I look forward to talking with you. I can't believe it. I sent letters to a list of old P.O. boxes that the private investigator found. Miraculously, one of them made its way to Jack. Yes, hello. I nervously call him back. He's hesitant and doesn't want to stay on the phone long. But after a little convincing, he agrees to let me come visit. Clearly, we could we could make some arrangement here. That's when he tells me that he lives on top of a mountain in Northern California. What's Jack doing all the way out here? Hello, I'm Jack Rebney. I'm the caretaker here at Rock Creek Lake. This is a fishing resort, as it were. Beautiful clean air, wonderful clean water, and big fish for a uh, consummate fisherman. A lot of people have um, asked, how can you live up here alone? Um, what are you, a hermit? <laughs> yes, um, I guess I am a hermit. I have everything that I'm interested in. I have my books, I have my computer. I have a telephone which allows me to reach my friends. That, to me, is entirely sufficient. I, I don't need the sound of the subway or the elevators going up and down in the skyscrapers. I've, I've been there. I don't need that anymore. I'm quite pleased here. Jack is so calm. I almost can't believe it. I thought there would at least be a little swearing. But it's as if he spent the last 20 years meditating and drinking green tea. Come on, I want to show you my luxurious 76-year-old cabin. It has everything that I need. It has books. It has a fireplace, yes. It has um, shotguns, <laughs> rifles. I had never heard anything about it. I had no idea 
that anybody had taken those outtakes and put them together. Ultimately, uh, one of my dear friends called and he said, have you pulled yourself up on the internet? No. And now said there's this thing about the Winnebago thing and so forth and so on. And he said, uh, it's hysterical. <laughs> it's just, it's hysterical. It's you. It's you. The Winnebago concepts and engineering departments have developed a multifunctional bathroom. Privacy, I don't even know what the fuck I'm reading. <laughs> I wonder what the fuck the real dialogue is. You know, the scary part is that, of course, all of this comes back. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the agony that I was going through. Here. It's going to be very helpful in keeping you from falling down, you big dumb son of a. Well, it it it, it is amusing to me because it it's clearly what it is is <laughs> it's some of the historicity of my of my youth, as it were. There's a there's a considerable amount of humor to it, but for the life of me, I, I truly I don't understand its popularity. Jack isn't even phased by the video. He barely knew it existed, and he doesn't seem to care. Did I make too big a deal out of this? Am I wasting his time with what he sees as a trivial event in his life? It's a little odd for a 76-year-old to choose to live alone in the woods. But Jack seems at peace up here in his seclusion. Okay, action, Jack, give us the clap, please. Whatever the case, he seems to enjoy being on camera again. You know, there's a further thought. Certainly, I'm, I'm known as the angriest man on Earth, but I'm also known as the Winnebago man. And there is some considerable degree of pleasure in that. Winnebago, I, I found the people there, I found the corporate entity and everyone I worked with to be just a, a splendid group of very kind, very gracious people. And if I represented them 20 years ago in those marketing videos, um, that pleases me. I'm, I'm happy about that. The old hermit bids you uh, all good things. Bye. Hello? Ben! When I get home, Jack starts calling. Oh, my God, Stein, Burner, Brunner, Brunner, Brunner. How are you today? He tells me he has a confession. In that filming that we did, I was Mary Poppins. He tells me that I was set up, that he was putting on an act. I was being calm, I was nice, I didn't slam my fist down on anything. He explains that he'd been humiliated and angry when he first found out about the clip and wanted to sue everyone involved. This is an illegality. I didn't know this existed. These outtakes were maliciously put together. And it, it really galls me when I, when, when I think about the fact that my name is plastered all over that fucking abysmal piece of shit tube. But he strategized that by acting like a calm, gentle old man, he could avoid going down in history as the angry Winnebago man. But now he's decided that he wants people to know the real Jack Rebney and share his thoughts about the world. I see this whole fucking country going to shit in a ass basket. It, it just, it's, it's staggering to consider how utterly, brainlessly fucking stupid the mass of people in this country are at this juncture. He keeps reaching out to me, calling and sending me things. He wants me to read newspaper columns he's written and sends me a book he's writing about politics and religion. The title of the book is Jousting with the Myth, and it has a subtitle. It's an heretical analysis of God, religion, sex, and politics. Almost everything is a commentary about the failings of modern society. He wants to get his concerns out into the world and thinks my film can help. I find out that Jack was a broadcast journalist. I used to produce programming for 50 million people. My, my initial experience was at WBBM, the CBS station in Chicago. And then I went on and I became a news director at various stations around the country. I was greatly taken with news and news production. I loved the concept. I loved the Ed Murrows and the Severides and the Bill Shadells and the, all of the, the, old, the old people who reported news. They didn't give you any 
opinion. That was the concept behind news. It was fair. And um, that changed. And I came to the point of where I concluded, I don't want this anymore. I never wanted to see West 52nd Street again. I never wanted to see Wilshire Boulevard again. I never wanted to see Wacker Drive again. That give you an idea? Jack is intent on clearing his name and proving that he's not the irrational man in the Winnebago clip. So to get some perspective, I head to Las Vegas to meet Jack's oldest friend, a corporate jet pilot named Keith Gordon. Keith and Jack talk on the phone every day. You have to understand, one of the dichotomies about Jack is that he's always wanted an audience. He's always wanted to influence people's thought process at the same time has always wanted to be totally isolated his dream was to always have some land where he could build a cabin and as he would always say to me lock the gate and uh, not have to deal with the outside world well it turns out he had done that in spite of that the outside world uh, blazed a trail to his door 35 years I've known him. He never in his wildest dreams thought that his notoriety would come from the internet, which he has nothing but disdain for, let alone outtakes of an industrial film he did for Winnebago Industries. This is not the context that Jack Rebney wants to be known in. Well, let's call Jack. Oh my God, you're still alive. There was a period in my life where I had hit rock bottom and uh, would have easily been living under a freeway overpass or sleeping in my car. Actually, I didn't even have a car at that point. My car had been stolen. And uh, Jack took me in. You know, he gave me a floor to sleep on and some clothing to wear and you know, literally kept me from being uh, destitute. Oh, you think this is all ending up on the cutting room floor? Well, let me remind you, young man. This whole thing started with footage left on the cutting room floor. You're not out of the woods yet. Keith assures me that Jack really does want to be back on camera and reclaim his reputation. And I'm starting to realize that the Winnebago Man clip could be a blessing in disguise. Maybe I can reach out to his internet fans and show them a different Jack Rebney. But I return home to some disturbing news. Jack has been diagnosed with acute glaucoma and his vision has deteriorated suddenly. On a recent walk, he couldn't find his way home. The local sheriff's report was posted online and discovered by Jack's fans. I returned to Manton for a second visit. stay outside <laughs> you're in the goddamn wild <laughs> this is not fucking austin hi jack nor is it the city limits how are you i'm good how are you i'm okay it's good to see you again buddha get down buddha get down i'm i'm uh, i'm very old i'm very crotchety i'm uh, pissed off what else is new ben you were pissed off last time we came, came on. no i wasn't i was a gentle old man i was a i was a nice Nice, calm old man who 
just nodded and did everything that you wanted me to do and said all of that absolute trash that I said, which was totally untrue. And, um, uh, but uh, forewarned, uh, you're still here. And um, I'm sure that you'll find this to be a bit different. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Jack, I want you to tell us what's happened since we last oh, saw you. Oh. I've had the unfortunate circumstance of having my vision leave me. I'd, I'd, it's almost like a divorce. I didn't understand what I'd done. <laughs> For practical purpose, I'm helpless. I can't drive. I can't ride my unicycle. Um, this dog isn't big enough to harness and put behind or in front of a sled. So I'm, I'm, I'm trapped. Come on, Buddha. Come on, booty. Despite his sudden blindness, Jack doesn't want to leave the cabin and give up his seclusion. There's no seat here. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> when was the last time you went into town, Jack? I don't know, about a week, I guess, something like that. Since Jack wants to get his ideas out to the world, my plan is to go into town and get him a video camera. I'll set up the camera in his cabin so he can record weekly commentaries for his fans, like a modern day Ed Murrow. Well, Jack, I want you to use your notoriety. You want me to do what? Use your notoriety. I want to buy a camera and set it up and have you do your social political commentaries. Well, we haven't yet come to any agreement as to whether or not we're going to do any of that. I'm going to what I'm, I'm going to appear on on YouTube. Yeah, oh, that'll be great. I can't I can hardly wait. And I'll be programmed right between the guy with the broken arm and um, and somebody doing a an exotic dance. That'll be great. I just don't think that you're taking advantage of this group of people that you could talk to, Jack. You don't think I'm taking advantage of who? Of this audience that you have. I don't want an audience. I don't need an audience. If that was true, why would you call me? Why would you call Keith Gordon? Why would you keep talking to all these people? Why would you be trying to publish a book and write a screenplay? Well, no, and... no, wait a minute. No, you see, you can't mix apples and oranges. Those are audiences. Those no, are looking for audiences. they're audiences, yeah. I don't believe that I have the capability of being able to couch anything in a vernacular that's going to be understood by the people that you want me to talk to. I don't, I'm, I, I can't, I have no relationship with YouTube or whatever the hell it is. I have no interest. What I'll do, we can go stand in front of Walmart and I'll give you a couple of diatribes and then you can put them on YouTube. You can take this, take them off the tape here, Put them on YouTube, and you'll find out what kind of a reaction you get. All right, so that's what we're going to do. I don't want to break my goddamn leg getting out of this pile of shit. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that was atrocious. And action, Jack. Are you, uh, how's your audio? Is everything all right there? One, two, three, four. Yep. We're good. Five, good. six, seven, eight. Mm -hmm. Over the top of my shoulder, you... <clears throat> undoubtedly would be able to see that we're standing in proximity to a place called Walmart. Um, you see their large carriers going down the highway in it, and they always say, for less, you can buy for less. Well, there's a connection it's here. The Walmart manager right there. Well, good for you, Mr. Walmart manager. You're a little trepidatious. <laughs> does does Walmart own this part of the place too? It's Walmart, yes. Oh, oh you own it. You own the street. We thought. Don't you own Reading? We thought we were on the on the sidewalk, like over by the road. This is my super center lot. Okay. This is your who? Uh, I'm a, I'm oh yeah, you call the police. By all means, call the police now. Get the Gestapo. Come on, let's get out of here. Fuck him and the horse he rode in on. I thought we'd cut another piece in front of Best Buy, which would give us the opportunity to have the police come and throw us off the Best Buy parking lot. We go to Best Buy, 
and I bring up the video camera idea again. And I thought that would be, I thought that would be of value rather than this continually uh, going back to the fact that I'm some type of an icon and that I'm, uh, and that people want me either to say motherfucker or, or shit or whatever it might be. And, and I'm not going to do that. So what you're saying is you don't want to do the camera thing. Ben, what I'm saying is that what, what, where it stands is exactly where it stood. What you've got is you've got zilch, unless you've got me. Let's, let's stop this, this nonsense. I mean, this is just fucking ridiculous. But I don't understand what you're saying is nonsense. Help me understand what you mean. You're taking the, you're taking the joy, you're taking the fun out of it. Okay, well, I don't and know. I don't, and I don't need it. I don't need to be here. I can get on my fucking phone and call a cab and get the fuck out of here. Okay. Man, I mean, you know, listen, if I can leave CBS three times, I sure as fuck can leave you. The next morning, we drive back to see Jack and try a different approach. Mic check, check. Ten nine eight seven six five four three two one and all of the rest of it, including Hillary Clinton. Tell us about what your um, what your childhood was like. You have an ulterior motivation in this. <laughs> I do. <laughs> ben, 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 your transparency is almost mind-boggling. Ben, my childhood was magnificent. The only problem with my childhood is I didn't have a choo-choo train. Well, tell us where you were born. And I, where... I'm not, I'm not, we're not going to go into that. No? No. What about, I don't... about uh, being married? Do you want to talk about that at all? We already talked about it, remember? I, if you fuck with me with this, Ben, it ends it right now. Leave it alone. Okay, I think you're. I think you're misunderstanding. I anything. don't care what you think in terms of my bi ability to be able to understand anything. If you piss me off, that reaction will be something you will not forget. The fuck are we doing? Are you happy that we're making this documentary about you? Do you want us to be up here? Do you want me to be asking you questions? And do you want to be in this position? What I want to do for these last few uh, feet of film that I may ever make, I want people to understand that there are critical elements that they have to attend to or they're gonna lose their country. Dick Cheney has had eight years to literally ruin this economy. That's, th that's the issue. Hey, Jack. Yeah. Let me stop you. Sure. Let's go back up here and stand in the sunshine and get in the, get where it looks good. I try to persuade Jack that if he wants to reach people, he's got to tone down the politics and open up to the camera. But you're not going to get to anybody by saying that Dick Cheney is fucked and the country's fucked. There you I'm go. Not? No. Oh, why? You're going to get to somebody by fucking relating who you are and what your oh, past experiences oh, have been. No, no. And what you've learned. Oh, well, like, sure. You want to talk about me? Yeah. Oh, I, wonderful. I'm trying to talk about you. Yeah. You're not well, letting me I talk about you. Well, I don't. Why not? That's what I'm asking you. That's what I don't understand. Ben, if you don't like it, pack up. Get the fuck out. I decide to step out of the way and try letting Jack confront his fans face to face. I get the idea to set up a special screening. I call Jack and he reluctantly agrees to come. We're just outside of Manton and we're on our way to pick up Jack to take him to the Found Footage Film Festival in San Francisco, which seems really unlikely that we'd be doing this, but we are.
when we speak on the phone, he often hears these in the background, and uh, he adores the sound of the wind chimes. So I thought we'd grace his chalet with these. Also, I thought it'd be kind of a homing beacon. If he was out on the property and got a little off course, if the wind's blowing, he'd hear these, and he'd be able to find his, his home again. So we're going to announce our arrival with these. He may shoot at us. Be careful. You're so fucking crazy, it's just amazing. Where do you want these? Other than up your ass. So are you excited about San Francisco? Oh yeah, terribly excited. I can hardly wait. <laughs> Sit. Buddha stays. Good girl. Buddha stays. Buddha stays. Buddha, stay. Oh. He snuck off the porch. Buddha, get up there. See, she knows you're blind and she... That's she it. She's tricking me. Get up on the porch. Well okay. done. Fuck you, Buddha. Santa, there's going to be questions from the audience and what have you and of course that begs the begs the question the initiating question do you suppose these people actually can uh, form questions and um, will we be able to communicate with one another now jeff what if someone wants an autograph when you sign autographs fuck them Well, thank you so much for uh, for coming down here. It's an honor to uh, to have both of you here. It's no honor. That's absolute bullshit. You brought so much enjoyment and laughter to us that uh, this is we are so indebted schmuck, to you. This schmuck over here to my right has been telling me this now for what two years, Ben? It's Three true. years? Two years. Two huh? years. Two years. It's so true. Dude, and you'll oh, see you tonight. Oh, you brought me such enjoyment. You're gonna see tonight. I can't how... begin to tell you how marvelous. When you're here tonight, go. you'll hear the laughs. Yeah. You'll hear, you'll hear people enjoy. Makes people how many? Laugh. You're gonna have eight people. No. We're going to have a full house. It's going to be sold out. Uh, who are these crazies, these lunatics that are going to be here? Explain them to me. I'm here to see the Winnebago guy. I'm hoping that he's going to say the F word a lot. <laughs> We're huge Ripney fans. I'm here for Jack Ripney all the way. I'm glad he's alive and doing well, and I hope he's still bitter. I don't know. He, uh... It's got a special spot in my heart, that's for sure. I, I love this clip. I watch it like every time I'm in a bad mood. I watch it and it makes me laugh. I really do. It's kind of sad. It's kind of sad. If I can get in, if I can get in, this is not looking so good. I think like I think people would kind of expect him to just be really, really upset all the time. And like I don't know if like any of these people are like expecting him to like go off and start yelling at all of them. If I was him, that's what I would do. Okay, here we go. Three, two, Why don't you shoot the fucking film? Getting you to smile is a lost cause. I don't believe Can that. Can you give any reason at all why I should smile? It's kind of like, you know what it is? The internet's like the uh, modern day freak show. Yeah, except you don't have to pay a nickel to get in. Man, it's like meeting the three-headed boy or something. It's great. Well, I'm, I'm curious to see how Jack reacts to the whole thing, to, to confront his fans. Sorry to announce it to see you folks, but the 715 is sold out. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Buckle up. Hey, hey, thank you for coming out. For coming out. And I don't know if you heard or not, but there's a special guest here tonight. If you haven't heard, we're not going to tell you. Special guest. You don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> 
doctor is the medicine for the heart, body and mind. He takes away all your stress. Just laugh it out. Ah! <laughs> I'm gone. Who's, who's on now? Don't know. <laughs> Um, okay, you know, many years ago, uh, some friends of ours gave us some footage uh, from a promotional video for the Winnebago brand of RVs. Here's the backstory. Uh, on the first day of this grueling, hot, two-week shoot, the crew realized that the host of this, of this promotional video had a bit of a temper. But we got some, the raw footage, and we decided to kind of put together a collection of our favorite moments of Jack Rebney, the world's angriest RV salesman. Jack Rebney! <laughs> The Winnebago Concepts and Engineering Departments have developed a multifunctional bathroom. Privacy, I don't even know what the fuck I'm reading. I wonder what the fuck the real dialogue is. What the fuck is this thing? All of the windshield, per fuck's sake. Oh, fuck. What? What the fuck did I say? That didn't sound for shit. We suppose we open... <laughs> Gotta do it again, right now. Oh, fuck. 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 Oh, fuck. Shit. What does the goddamn line say, Tony? What is the goddamn line? I don't give a shit what the line is. I fucked up the word rear. I can't even read the fucking B.O. straight. What the fuck was that? I think we got flies all over the fucking place. Son of a bitch. Get out of here, you goddamn jackass. <laughs> The accoutrement that you will need. Accoutrement? What is that shit? I don't know, shit. It's just all gone. I get some goddamn diuretic when I sit here, and my mouth just never stops. Ain't worth it. Not this shit. It ain't fucking worth it. The Mini Winnie, part of American tradition, and today on the cutting edge of design and function in a Class C motor home. You believe any of that shit? <laughs> God bless him. We have an update for you about Jack Rebney. We didn't know if Jack was alive or dead. We had no. Oh, idea. We thought he was dead for sure after this video we shoot. Thought, yeah, the Heart attack or yeah, something. Yeah, the frustration alone. But um, no, he was alive. He was living in Northern California, and uh, through some fate of circumstance, tonight we have Jack Rebney in the audience, ladies and gentlemen. Jack Rebney. This is a long time coming for us. This is history right here, folks. Jack, we're going we're gonna to interview you here. If we can ask you a few questions, we're heading here. Yes, it'll be wonderful, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah. He seems to be in a somewhat good mood. Will you leave me alone? Leave me okay. alone. I'm going to do this. Are you ready to come over? Yeah, yeah, let's do it, baby. Okay. Right. So start at the beginning, Jack. What, tell us about that shoot. What's start at the beginning. In the beginning, there was darkness. <laughs> a little bit later than that. A little bit later. Hold on for Winnebago. Let's start at Winnebago. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's I get, start on this shoot. I lose it sometimes. I get, oh, I get whatever it is. And in answer to what seems to be the salient question, are you truly the angriest man in the world? <laughs> Tell us. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to lay that on you. You have to have some historical perspective in terms of how this shoot was done, where it was done, etc. The Winnebago Corporation is located in a little thing called Forest City, Iowa. The average temperature during the summertime is about 100 degrees. The average humidity is about 98 degrees or percent. There's no wind. And the, he, you're pretty well aware of the fact that there are about 150 million flies. <laughs> you don't think you can get pissed off in that kind of a situation, <laughs> huh? But in terms of anger, uh, truly today, in this cultural climate, I really am angry. <laughs> Go ahead. Questions. What? <laughs> okay. I think the thing, the thing you keep in mind here... As we all get frustrated, we all have moments where we want to say that, but no one can do it as colorfully as you did. <laughs> one of the greatest swearers of all time. I think so. And um, we It's a learned, it's a learned thing. <laughs> uh, well, Jack, I mean, we certainly appreciate you coming here. We wanted to maybe give you a token of our appreciation. I, I just wanted to ask him okay, one question ahead. before yeah. we do that. Do you hate us? <laughs> 
No, I actually, um, the only person I can think of immediately comes to mind is Dick Cheney. Well, these are, these are, shut up for a minute. These are, he doesn't hate us. He these are, hate us. these are, cool. these are my people. I mean, I can tell that right now. I mean, you know, and we may be separated by about 127 years, but they, they understand. They've got it. They got it nailed. Well, Jack, we did want to, the summer months are upon us. It's going to be hot and humid again. And so as yeah. a token of our appreciation, yeah. we wanted to present you with this honorary fly swatter that we really think oh, this is for you, Jack. We help we'll get all the jackasses away oh, for the rest of the summer. Here thank you, go. you Here. so much. Keith, that do you is, want to present that? Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank so, you. Uh, just, I'm, I'm touched. <laughs> just one last question, Jack. Yeah, what? Um, what did you mean by accoutrement? What? <laughs> you know, there's, there's a question here as to whether or not it's accoutrement or whether it's accoutrement. And there may be somebody here who actually speaks French rather than some dumb shit like myself. <laughs> Can we hear it? Accoutrement? Accoutrement. Okay. Accoutrement? Is that it? <laughs> Listen, baby, when you're in Iowa, it's fucking accoutrement. <laughs> Shaking right now. I'm I'm shaking. Shaking. Yeah. I can die and go to heaven. How do you follow that up? Wow, that was that was you terrific. You kill. Look at look at you've got a fly swatter. <laughs> can I, I I can I'm overwhelmed. What I've tried to convey to you this whole time is that the audience really appreciates. You, the situation, the whole thing. None of it was to steal a page from your book, denigrative. These people actually admire what you did. And are incredibly entertained. So, two for the price of one. You hear that, Jack? No, what? You said Jack Redney and everybody just thunderous applause. Jack Hi, Jack. I'm Noel. Thank Hello. you. Hi, hi. How are you? I, I'm wonderful. Thank you. I I'm hope so... you enjoyed it. Oh, my God. You have no idea. This clip, every time I'm in a bad mood, I, and I watch you swear, and it makes me, it makes me smile. So thank you so much. You're most welcome. Hi, I'm Rachel. Hi, how are you? Great, it's so nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm very happy to meet you. Do you mind taking a picture with me? Not at all. Thank not you. at all. Your celebrity? Well, actually, um, it, um, at this juncture, it, it doesn't seem to be anything that really turns me on, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was awesome. Uh, he has a way with words that night. <laughs> I thought he was a kind soul. <laughs> See, now, now I feel like a huge jerk, because he's actually seemed like a really sweet guy. <laughs> yeah, just like my grandpa. <laughs> just like every, he's everybody's grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> everybody's angry grandpa. Spoken. So well spoken, Brilliant. it was almost scary. I want to scream out, we love you, Jack Revney. Seriously. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Good, good. It's better to laugh than to cry. And uh, we're turning to our right. Turning to the right. What do you say we... Uh, Life continues. Let's get a glass of wine. I think we should get a glass of wine. I think, I think we, we deserve a glass of wine. Well, let me ask you something. Yeah, you can. On the way down, you you mentioned you, know, you had you had a certain preconceived notion about who this audience was, uh -huh. what they were about. It wasn't necessarily complimentary. What do you think now? I was concerned that they were room temperature IQ'd idiots, and as it turns out, they were clever, quick. Um, observant people. Oh, okay. Well, that answers my question. <laughs> Good. Now, why the hell they'd watch a lousy fucking video like that is something I'll never know. Yeah.
What the boots? Hello, boots. Up the boots, sir. Did you think you were deserted? Did you have a good night's sleep? Oh, ho, ho, the booter. <laughs> you made a lot of people happy this weekend. Well, it, it, it's interesting. The we we keep going back to this, but in, in fact, what it is is that there there is apparently a, really a true camaraderie with this poor belabored person who uh, says pretty much what comes to his mind when he's met with adversity and what have you, and that's good. And that I think that's probably isn't that interesting that when I say it and I listen to myself babbling, uh, that's really the human condition, is it not? Right there, in in simple terms, what we're doing is we're we're facing an enormous amount of adversity, and it and it seems disastrous that we don't let ourselves say what we really feel, what we truly feel, and um, and and um, I, I'd, I'm I'm happy to say that I I take some de small degree of pride in the fact that when when I'm faced with that, and when I'm faced with it today. I say exactly what I have on my mind. Isn't there some way you guys can leave? Can't you go now? <laughs> All right, All right, kid. pal. All righty. See you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Come yeah. here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Rebney may never be remembered as a political firebrand or important thinker, but there's a good chance he won't be forgotten. His swearing, ranting, unrestrained self somehow reminds us that we are not alone in our frustrations and blunders. And maybe that's enough. You believe any of that shit? Coming up, no sooner has a computer hit the high street than the technology is obsolete and we're lusting after the next best thing. Simon Armitage investigates in Upgrade Me, next. <laughs>